Hello, I'm Dino. I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> I just hatch. Next to this massive, big, beautiful Echeveria chocolate crested. That's quite a big plant. Look at this. My hand is going here, so do your spread like that, and that's what. Look. Hello. Look at that. Big, 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 big crest. Huge crest. And to think, when I got this one, it was only a tiny little crest. That one's about that small there. And from, so about a couple of inches, uh, two inches wide. And now it has grown massive. Look at this. And check out the back. I'm going to show you the wave. Hello. How beautiful is that? Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that Beautiful. And this is Graptoveria snow peach. Isn't that gorgeous? We just had some rain and you can see some parts are starting to dry up, but most of it are still wet. Now I can't get over <laughs> how big this Semper Vivum Onyx. I want to put this in a big pot. So as with a lot of my plants, I want to repot. And this Binesi, or Albert Baines, sorry. You are, Binesi is so confusing. Albert Baines has grown really, really big. It's like a massive purple delight. So that's what it looks like. Anywho, I got some nice news. Okay, the news is... I'm going to show you something very beautiful. This is my Echeveria Pink Dragon. So this plant is a very prolific grower. Anyway, this one is actually feeling a bit soft. I can feel some softness, some tenderness. It's a beautiful plant and it grows into a cluster. As it grows into a cluster, ta-da! One of the corner or one of the rosette has variegated. Can you see the variegation? So, okay, hang on. I'll just put this down just in case I drop it. See that line there? See that leaf? Okay, see that leaf over there? That is totally variegated. So that one, say look at one, there you go. Two, uh, there should be more. I don't know, three. So one, two, three, four leaves and also the inside in the center that's also forming variegation that tells me that this whole plant will be a variegated one so i will need to oops sorry <laughs> i will need to isolate it separate it from the gang here and let it have its own pretty pot I have just recently potted up some champagne, Echeveria champagne. I've got a few champagnes, that's not a champagne, that's a Romeo. Still my favorite, Romeo. So I think that one is red wine. Let's just go have a look. This is, I think, oh, okay, where's your label? Oh, yes, that's the one, red champagne. See the price? Oh, that's what I paid for it. I nearly drop it. That's what I paid for it. And it's understandable why it is so expensive. Because if it's prettier than the other one, the other one on the left is red one champagne and the one on the right is a red champagne. The more compact one, so the more compact it is, or should I say, the fatter it is, the uh, more expensive it is so just like uh, <laughs> I was gonna say women <laughs> women who are rounded well-rounded and <laughs> voluptuous the, the ones with the childbearing hips are the ones because they can produce offspring the fatter <laughs> the female the better it is a prospect of it having kids but anywho, look at this nice little bump. So this is Heart's Choice. And I'm going to show you another one. This is called Gilo with Bumps. Two plants with very similar bumps. Should I say the same bumps? And since we're talking about voluptuous, I'd like to talk about bumps. 
lady bump heart's choice okay i think it's because of see the heart shape see especially that one see heart heart but this one is called gila with bumps and that one is heart choice another fancy name so if you don't know like i do i didn't know so i just found out today that these two are exactly the same plant but doesn't matter they still are as beautiful now this one I paid $30.40 when I got this one that was about the same size as that one and that one I paid $19 I want it at an auction for $19 because I thought it's a different plant duh <laughs> so it always pays to check so that way saves you buying it twice but doesn't matter so now I've got two of them now this one is leaf grown Echeveria bluebird all of them before was looking monstrous so monstrous is okay so this one now has reverted or grown into a standard normal the one on the right now the one on the left has gone monstrous so once it starts going funny shape that's what monstrous is called so monstrous form normal form and another monstrous one but it's more green and it's also sort of showing some silk variegations and that one is sort of a semi can't decide yet whether she's gonna be monstrous side or normal side but who loves bear paws i do especially when they start coloring up like this because most of the year <laughs> especially when the weather's hot they go to sleep they don't like it but when it gets cold, they start coloring up like this. The tips just go spread. Isn't that beautiful? Just gorgeous. Look at that. Ooh. Every time I do a video, a lot of you would comment below the video. Normally, I try and clear up my comment box as soon as I can. If I don't reply, I give you a heart. <laughs> that's what it means. But anyway, one of the comments that's still left in my inbox or in my comment box for a while is a comment about a Chevrolet Amestro and Honey Pink. I'm going to pull out this Amestro here don't drop it and I think I'm not too sure about her name something Fifi or something like that but anyway so this is your request the ones I got a one two three four five six they're honey pink these are all seed grown honey pink and when uh, Echeveria is seed grown they all don't look the same they all have different looks they are grown in the same area but see that one on the left is pinkier than that one in the center and then that one on the right is sort of looking like monstrous form and so as this one is green but monstrous form having all that lines like a champagne anyway the center one is also like monstrous but anyway that one is just like a compact form but now the difference or similarity with a mestro very different so the smallest amestro is the one i could compare it to for one honey pink doesn't grow very big and amestro can grow quite huge so this one uh the one on the left the size so compare that one now so this honey pink on the left eventually will grow into about the size of the amestro on the right almost but the amestro can still grow into have to put it down because i'm gonna drop it so that's the size okay if i spread my hand from there to there so it's about four inches four and a half that plant is anyway now the bigger size amestro is this one here which is as you can okay <laughs> the span of my hand just about like look at that from that view there look it's just huge it grows big and beautiful okay i'll pull out this one look oh look at that it's huge they grow quite big now i am gonna go back to this area here because i want to talk about champagne who likes champagne or the drinking variety this one is called sugar jelly also known as graptiveria lulu now lulu here is next to a romeo hello lulu meet romeos you get a few romeos around you but in here this is chocolate lady and that one there 
is not a champagne. That is a champagne. And that's not a champagne. That's Ruby Donna. And those are champagne. Now, why am I comparing horses for courses? Well, let me show you. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, I always say. Now, this one looks like a champagne. Look at that. All the lines looks very similar to my pink champagne here. See? Look at that. Okay, should I lift it? Oh, my goodness. I don't like lifting things because, so look, they're identical. But this, apparently, is not a champagne because I bought it with a label called Big O. Hang on, I'll put you down here. This plant is quite, uh, it almost died on me, this plant, and it came back. Now, this one on the left is called Red Champagne. Champagne is a hybrid between a Romeo, Romeo, and <laughs> Lowy. Where's my Lowy? Hang on, I'll go get a Lowy. That is my Lowy, or Lowy looking, because that is not a Lowy. That's actually a uh, exotic grown from a leaf of an exotic. Now, exotic is also a hybrid of Lowy. And this is my Lowy, very skinny at the moment. And this is my pink Lowy. So pink Lowy, exotic, and... Lowy. Now, <laughs> over here is Mundas, another Lowy hybrid, Lilacina and uh, Lowy. So now I'm back here. So Lowy and Romeo equals champagne. You have pink champagne, you have white champagne, red champagne that's not red at the moment because it's grown in the shade and I just reported it, and red wine champagne. And another blood champagne this small one here and <laughs> that one also looks like a white champagne just like the white champagne but this is not a white champagne this is Echeveria Mundas which is a Lilacina and Lowy hybrid so get my drift that's why for a long time, I have a beef with Lowy. I mean, with sorry, with champagne. It, I don't really have a beef with it. I just don't know what the fuss is all about. And then everyone's going, no. Yes, well, it's a hybrid. And to me, maybe because I haven't got it grown in the right area, or maybe I haven't got the right hybrid. But to me, what steals my heart is still my Romeo. I love my Romeo and especially Romeo Rubin is my favorite red Echeveria. Now over here, I have a pot full of pink champagne. Now, this pink champagne now is about ready to be grown into the big wide world. So I have an area, I'm still setting it up, but they will eventually go out exposed to the element that big pot in there because these ones okay now i got these ones quite cheap so most of the apart from those two over there and then that one too <laughs> i only got this here. okay it's still cheap you know bloody champagne 20 dollars hang on for a bloody champagne not the 260 it costs when I got this one, but I did not pay 260 for this one. I got it a lot cheaper. But at that time when I bought this one, champagnes were going for like 260, 150 for the white ones. And I don't see the point of spending that much money on something that eventually uh, is gonna be cheap, 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 cheap. So this one's now, I've got a one, pink champagne, a two, pink champagne, three, pink champagne, and four, pink champagne, all of that cost me $15. It was a teeny weeny tiny polka dot bikini like that, but it's a cluster, so about that size, about six months ago, and now it has grown, and look, look how big it is now, and this 
one two I just got this once recently and look I paid $15 for each of them so anyway so that's why my point is that I am not rubbishing champagne I love the plant but I just don't see the point in paying too much for it there's a lot of plants that is worth buying <laughs> like say a Compton carousel or a Beyonce but for me the champagnes is something that I would not spend my money on straight away I would just wait just like the Romeos when I got them six years ago oh by the way this champagne here is already five years old 2019 four years old is it yeah 2019 is when I got this one we went on a prospecting trip and I happened to find it just a small town that we went to and surprise surprise they have a succulent store a nursery selling succulents anyway uh, now the Romeo when I got these Romeos most of my Romeos I got half a dozen Romeo to start with and a couple of them I've given away but the ones I've got I've already grown and a lot of these ones are now from propagation so you might say I have so many Romeos look a Romeo Romeo Romeo, Romeo, that one I paid $35 for the original Romeo, which is the most useless one because it's slow growing. I'm trying to make it grow. So apparently it's original. So that's why I put an opal just so I know that it's special. But I don't see that any more special than my other Romeos. In fact, they are more special because look, look at all the Romeo babies that I have grown. And so now I've got well I got still big ones that um, I have grown <laughs> but anyway I, I saw something <laughs> and I lost my head again so the color <laughs> I just love red I don't know it makes me happy now this is Sinocrasula indica the Sinocrasula indica is flowering and a lot of people are having a heart attack every time their succulents flower because they think it's going to die. There are some plants that are monocarpic, which means they flower and they die. It's like agave. Agave would take a long time to grow. And when they do grow, they would produce uh, this massive big stalk, like, I don't know, how many meters high, like 10 meters high almost. No, no, probably it is, no, about 25 feet. Now, anyway, once it flowers like that or bloom it dies and then actually you can make tequila <laughs> but before it dies it produces a lot of offsets like this one the sinocrasula now you're thinking that is going to die yes it will this stalk will die but you break it off and they're so easy you can just breathe on them or walk past them and if the winds blowing a bit stronger the the leaves fall off and they will grow I promise you so this one's now okay I'm gonna break that off so that okay so you see how it just drops now if you drop it somewhere in the garden or on the concrete and you forgot about it you can come back to it later on and find all the Sinocrasula growing that is uh, something that you did not expect okay so every single one of those bits will grow because that's how easy it although the flower is so gorgeous isn't it probably put it in the vase hang on I'll put you here so when I come back later on, I can give that flower to Juliet. Now, no, this one now, what was I? So easy to grow. Yes, okay, this is now. All of these ones are grown from a leaf. And recently it got attacked by mealybug and because it was dry. I haven't watered it for a while or this section it keeps going. This, this is now heavy. It's now well watered because I watered it uh, a few days ago. Now this one's every single one of them will grow into a beautiful plant. So hang on. I got that's not a Romeo. That's a leaf grown Frank Reynolds. There you go. Hang on. Let's go over. See those ones there? Those are actually cuttings from that very same uh, leaves that I've just shown you. So 
the when I, I was given like three pieces of cuttings and anyway the leaves were falling off so I just stuck it on that pot and then of course they started growing yes I forgot to feature this one too this is a Chaviria chocolate lady this is also another plant I wouldn't mind having more when I got this it was tiny it was like four centimeters and now look it's nice and big see so gorgeous 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 but it also has a lot of well cobwebs don't worry about the cobweb because the cobweb can protect the plant from mealybug and fungus gnats so they fly around and they get trapped in it so that one I think there's already got a white uh, mealybug got trapped there and anyway also in the center there is actually droplets so anyway this one is a beautiful more narrow leaf Echeveria, not as wide as the champagne, but it's got like a pointy champagne. That's what it looks like to me. But the color is just so delicious. Okay, you've got the Romeo up the top and you've got this chocolate lady in the bottom and you can see the difference of the color. So the big O, which looks better than the champagne, that reminds me I have to bring this one. They actually pale in comparison to that chocolate lady so if you have a chance to get a chocolate lady get some chocolates in your life it's worth it I love it also add-on <laughs> another add-on this is Echeveria agavoides pretty in pink okay so this is I think an import from China or a new hybrid that came from China so Pretty in pink here tells me that this is somehow related to a Romeo. See? Beautiful. So that's why therefore it's called Agavoides. Now, I did buy an Echeveria Pretty in Pink before. That's what it's called, Echeveria Pretty in Pink. Now, they changed the name to, anyway, when I got it, by the way, it looks and it kind of looks like this. See? Look at that. And now they changed the name to that. Called Spotted Blood Romeo or whatever. Anyway, but this is also named Echeveria Gavoides Pretty and Pink when I got it. Now, this Pretty and Pink is not the same as the Graptoveria Pretty and Pink. This is Agavoides Pretty and Pink and it's an Echeveria. So anyway guys, that's all I've got for this video. Now compare, compare. Now this one, when it grows up, are you going to show me some beautiful spots like that? Who knows?